Well, welcome to Church of the Rock Online. We are so happy that you have joined us for this special Good Friday service. If you haven't already done so, please jump into the chat, say hi, let us know where you're joining us from. And uh, just a reminder, we will be taking communion together in just a few minutes. Uh, so make sure you have some bread or crackers or some juice uh, ready so that you'll be able to participate in that with us. Well, Pastor Steve, churches around the world are celebrating something very special today. Why is it so important to gather and do this on Good Friday? Yeah, Good Friday, it is really the, uh, the core of our faith in a big way. It's when we remember the enormity of what Jesus did on the cross for us, that he died for our sins. Mm. And it is a wonderful weekend of remembering what he did. And it starts on this difficult note of remembering that he died for each and every one of us. That's right. You know, Christmas is an important time for, for Christians. You know, we like to celebrate the birth of Jesus, but really without his death and resurrection, I mean, everything else is like, why would we even do it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, at the end of the day, our, our faith is really uh, exemplified by the uh, by, what, by this weekend, mm -hmm. that we are dead to sin and that Christ died for our sins on the Good Friday. But then we rise again, of course, and uh, we remember that of the resurrection on, on Sunday. Mm -hmm. But we don't go too quick quickly to that. We do remember the price that was paid. That's right. It is so important to remember that sacrifice first before we get to the celebrations, which of course we will throughout the rest of the weekend. But we thank you so much for joining us for this Good Friday service. We're going to head into the service now. God bless. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Today, we remember the most expensive gift you've ever been given. It is grace on full display. It's a body broken, it's blood shed, and it's actually a gruesome story, isn't it? There's parts of it that I think if we would have been there, we would have looked away. But today we get to look straight at the cross because this is what love looks like. Jesus said he wants us to remember, do this in remembrance of me. This is my body broken for you. This is my blood shed for you. Today we are gonna focus on the communion table, on what we receive when we come to it. And Jesus says, you are invited to the table. Shall we stand together? Thank you. 
you may be seated. The very first communion table, when Jesus came, he gathered around knowing what nobody else knew at the time. Some of the disciples were thinking about maybe this is kind of the great kingdom that's going to come and and the Jews are going to be established again or there's going to be a violent overthrow and Jesus is going to press his hand out and everything's going to come and and they're going to sit in place. But Jesus knew the story was going to be very different than that. He knew the story was that all of humanity, all of humanity's sin was going to rest on him. And there would be a moment when God would turn his back on his son. And so at the very first communion table, he gathered his closest friends with him. I want to take a moment to think about who was around that table with him. Who had a place at Jesus' table? Peter. Violent and brash, and when the chips were down, what happened to Peter? Yeah. In, you know, country terms, it was all hat, no horse. Right? Peter, lots of talk. And Jesus knew exactly that. Nathaniel sat maybe on the other side. And Nathaniel, for Nathaniel, prejudice was a huge issue. Like, can anything good come from Nazareth? James and John, remember the sons of thunder? They were kind of vindictive and had a whole lot of self-ambition. Hey, why don't we get mama to ask if we can be on the two favored sides? They're at the table. Matthew took money from his own people so that he could get rich. James and Andrew and Thaddeus and Philip and Thomas and Simon all had their things going on and they actually never understood. And then maybe right to the right of Jesus was Judas, the one who would betray him probably for money. And Judas had a place at the table. You and I, with all of who we are, with all of who we've done, are invited to the table. From this bread, eat. From this cup, drink. Come to my table and experience death's defeat. This is my body, broken for you. I choose to be broken so that one day you won't have to. I know I said where I go you should follow, but this time it can only be me. I know your heart is heavy as tomorrow waits for me. Sorrows gaining energy, ready to come for me. Sadness, grief, and pain, awaking to celebrate my suffering. Death is waiting, watching if this is actually happening. I can see the confusion in your eyes. I know you're struggling. I can see the sweat on your face glowing, a glistening of unknowing, wondering, when will be the day when morning will arise with morning? Friends, the Lord's ways are not our ways, but today I leave you with grace that even on days when your heart starts to sink, reflect on the power of my blood from this cup drink. It was so important that tonight we should gather. I want you to remember me and my words from this last supper. Because I love you, I must leave you. But a spirit is coming whom you shall cling to. He will guide you and live inside you. But that will mean I can no longer be beside you. Love does a multitude of things, and my death for you will cover a multitude of sins. I know we've had great memories. I know we've seen amazing testimonies. I mean, healings of leprosy, the forgiveness of many sins. I'm grateful for your time with me. 
that there will be days, hard days filled with difficulties, moments when you sin and fail miserably, when you're at your worst feeling like heaven's forgotten refugee. Promise me you'll come to me. From this bread, eat. From this cup, drink. Come to my table and remember me.
may be seated. This kind of grace, this kind of gift calls out for a response. And we're going to take a look at Peter at our second table. If you're a fisherman, your table is probably a campfire. It's where you would go and you would, after a long days of fishing, come and, and, and sustain yourself. Now, after Jesus died... All those disciples, even after he had risen, went back to their old thing. Good Friday demands a response. You see, their old thing was fishing. It was what they used to do. It was where they were before. Why, why did Peter go back to fish? Because he was still carrying the guilt and the shame of what he'd done. And he thought that all he had left was to look back. He was invited to the table and Jesus had a surprise for him. I remember when I said I did not know him. It was pitch black. It was like all of a sudden the stars and moon hid from the night and worry decided to build a home and rest its head in the darkness of my mind. I remember when I said, when I, said I did not know him. Yet he knew me, he picked me, he saw me for what God wanted me to be. He found me Simon, yet called me Peter, a rock, a fisher of men, not just a fisher. Yet when my faith got tested, I was clearly no leader. I remember when he first called me Simon. I loved how he just knew my name. Yet today, I answer to the echoes and calls of shame. Shame. Liar. Unlovable selfish. I guess I might as well go back to selling fish. I remember when I said I did not know him. My Lord, my master, my teacher, my Elohim. It's like fear had learned to swim and decided to float in the sweat puddle of my skin, ready to wash away the confession of my king. I said I did not know him. Those words, they throb at my heart like a cavity, a painful reminder of the decay of my destiny. I think I messed up my chance at eternity. I mean, why would a good God forgive a liar like me? Someone else deserves my spot at his mercy seat. My heart, it beats five syllables, unforgivable, unredeemable, a constant reminder why I'm so miserable. I wish I didn't say it. I wish I didn't say it. I wish I didn't say it. I had said I will go with him wherever he goes, whether to death or trial. I thought I gave him my everything. All I gave him was my denial. I said I did not know him. That would be the saddest story, wouldn't it? That would be the story that we, you and I can live in. Jesus died, he rose again, but we need to respond to Good Friday. What did Peter get at that table? If you know the story, they were fishing, and after he had arisen, he called them and he said, come. And he had a fire going and he had fish cooking. 
And he looked Peter in the eye and he said to him, you have a purpose. You are fully forgiven, fully redeemed, and fully restored. That purpose in Peter's heart led him to be a world changer in everything that he was doing. That inspired him for the rest of his life because Jesus said, you are forgiven. I died for that. And those words resonate for all of us from that moment forward. You are fully redeemed, you are fully forgiven, and you have a purpose. When you came in, you received a little card that said you are invited. And in a few moments, we're going to take communion and we're going to celebrate what it is that Jesus did. But we need to take this message personally. What did you receive? Maybe even in this season right now, what have you received at the table? What have you received by a broken body? and by a shed, shed blood of Jesus. So here's what we're gonna do. The house lights are gonna come up just a little bit you're, so you can see what you're writing. And on the back it says, at the table I received. You can come up to communion stations that are gonna be all over here and all over there. And you can just go back and sit down. There's a song that we'll be singing that you can just allow you to think and meditate and focus on God as you do it. So come up. Grab your communion, sit down, write down what it is. And, and somebody said, hey, I don't think I have enough room on this card. That's actually true, you don't. But what is it today that God is putting on your heart? You are invited to the table. Come up, grab your communion, sit down, write, and then we'll all take communion together.
This is my body broken for you. This is my blood that was shed. I want us to just take a moment and just allow whatever it is that you've written on the paper to be something that you present to God. For some of you, it it might be something that you've struggled with and the enemy has used it against you to say that somehow you're not at the table. That's called a lie. There is nothing more powerful than the blood of Jesus. It's washed away. That future that you're unsure of, he marked it out just like he marked it out for Peter. And it's yours to live and to enjoy because of the broken body and the shed blood. Let's take a moment and be in the presence of our beautiful Savior. There's none like you. We stand in awe of your sacrifice. Thank you, Abba. Please stand together. Do this in remembrance of me, the broken body of Christ, eat together. Thank you, Lord. This is my blood that was shed for you for the remission of all of your sins. So you could have a new relationship with me. Remember, as you drink. Father, we stand amazed at who you are. And and on this Good Friday, we pause to just remember what it is you've done. We thank you, Lord, for what was dirty is now clean, washed white as snow. We thank you, Lord, for a clear pathway. Even if we don't see it, you have it for our future. And today we do remember the most expensive gift we were ever given a broken body, and shed blood for us. If you agree, please say amen. 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 You may be seated. You know, we, we could, we could finish right there, but there's actually one more table. There's one more table that when Jesus was having his first communion with his disciples, he said, coming out of the book of Matthew, and he says, I tell you, I will not drink of the fruit of this vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. It's called the wedding feast of the lamb. And there is a time when you, the bride, comes and the bridegroom comes and celebrate. Now, this is a wedding feast. This is not some, I have to go to some third cousin's twice removed by thing and and some sort of obligation. This is the celebration. This is when you and all of us together come and we meet Jesus and we look at everything that he has done and we stand in awe because he still has the scars 
but you don't have any. Everything is gone. This is how the Bible says it. When John was getting his revelation, he says, and then I heard what seemed to be thunderous voices of a great multitude, like the sound of massive waterfalls and mighty peals of thunder crying out, hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Lord Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exalt him and give him glory because the wedding celebration of the lamb has come and the bride has made herself ready. And with these words, he says, wonderfully blessed are those who were invited to the table to the feast of the celebration of the lamb because of good friday there is an ultimate table that all of us are invited to and we get to celebrate that and we get to know that you are invited thank you lord come up and let's celebrate it together
you're going to stay standing and you're going to give him praise because he died for your sins. You're going to give him praise because he is the king of kings. You're going to give him praise because you have a seat at the table. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Okay, you can just remain standing. There might be people here today who've never made that choice to say, I accept him as the leader of my life, as the Lord. I I still carry that sin. We're going to give you a chance to respond back to that. If everybody would just bow their heads and close their eyes. There's probably no better time to give your life, whether you're watching online or in person, to Jesus is on Good Friday. I believe that, that we've experienced another piece today of the depth of what it means. So if you're watching or if you're here in the building and you say, I want to give God leadership of my life, I, maybe for the first time, maybe you need to rededicate your life, whatever it is, would you just raise your hand with, without anybody watching? Nobody's looking around. Yeah, I see, see your hands popping up. That's great. Online, you just hit that button. We're going to all pray together. And as we pray, heaven celebrates because this is the power of the Lamb slain before the beginning of time to wash away all of our sins. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving Jesus to us for his broken body for his shed blood today I receive it today I give leadership of my life to you in Jesus name amen yes thank you Amen. Well, if you just prayed that prayer to accept Jesus for the first time, we just want to welcome you into the family, and we would love to celebrate with you and to encourage you on the next steps of your journey. So please let us know of your decision. You can connect with us at churchoftherock.ca slash prayer, and a member of our ministry team will follow up with you. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed our Good Friday service and that you have found it to be uh, a time of reflection and thanksgiving. And we do hope that you'll be able to join us Sunday morning for one of our Easter services, because remember, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. See you soon.